at 1.12 a.m. local time. The sky vibrates with the chainsaw hum of an Iranian-made Shahed 136 drone, hunting blind over black fields. But tonight, it's being hunted. From the tree line, a Ukrainian Mi-8 helicopter erupts. Lights off, blades ripping the silence. A gunner locks in. Tracers climb like molten lightning. One question. How do you stop a $20,000 suicide drone without wasting a $3 million missile? Spoiler. Ukraine found the answer in the most unexpected way. In the next 10 minutes, you'll discover how Ukraine turned old helicopters into AI-powered drone killers, why Russia's swarm tactics are failing against mobile air defense groups, what this means for the future of NATO's counter-drone warfare. This isn't TV news. This is battlefield journalism, where every number tells a story and every drone strike is decoded down to the last algorithm. Did you know that in just one year, Ukraine destroyed over 3,200 Shade drones with this tactic? That's the equivalent of hundreds of missile strikes erased from Russia's arsenal. It's not billion-dollar defense systems. It's ingenuity, AI, and raw courage rewriting the future of aerial warfare. Here's how it happened. Subscribe for frontline analysis, next generation weapons technology, and exclusive insights into how AI, drone, and precision warfare are reshaping tomorrow's battles. The night sky above Kharkiv is alive with predators. An Iranian-made Shahed-136 drones low, its engine growling like a distant chainsaw. On the radar, it's just a pixel of noise, moving too slow to trigger high-speed interceptors. But tonight, something else stalks it. Out of the darkness, a Ukrainian Mi-8 helicopter bursts from the tree line, running dark, hugging the ground, and blades thundering. The gunner's sight glows emerald. A machine gun box, traces lacing upward like molten steel. The Shahed jerks and disintegrates midair. Fireballs rain down over the fields. In the cockpit, the pilot breathes heavy. It's kill number 3201. Another night, another silent victory in a war where the battlefield is the sky, and the hunters fly with iron halos above their heads. The Shed 136 isn't fast, it isn't pretty, but it is lethal. Russia deploys them in swarms, each packed with up to 40 kilograms of high explosives. Launched cheaply and en masse, they overwhelm traditional defenses. NATO-grade SAMs are too expensive to waste on drones that cost less than a Toyota Corolla. Even electronic warfare jammers struggle against their autonomous flight paths. The threat isn't the drone itself, it's the doctrine. Hundreds launched at night, timed to coincide with missile strikes. They saturate air defense radars, bleed interceptors dry, and slip through gaps. A single Shahed that sneaks past can tear through a power station, cripple rail supply lines, or level apartment blocks. This isn't just nuisance, it's pressure warfare and the enemy knows every gap in Ukraine's shield. Imagine this. Every night, the sky fills with suicide drones. Every choice is a losing choice. Waste a missile or lose a city. But then, Ukraine found a way. Not with more money, not with more missiles, but with something far more dangerous to Moscow. Ingenuity. The question was simple. How do you stop thousands of drones without bankrupting your defense grid? Ukraine faced a tactical nightmare. Patriot batteries weren't designed to chase lawnmower engines. Stinger missiles worked, but firing a $120,000 missile at a $20,000 drone was a losing equation. Helicopters could hunt them, but flying at night at treetop level came with its own risks. Russian manpads, hidden ALOA, and electronic interference from Moscow's jamming umbrella. Then came rules of engagement. Every engagement had to be confirmed to avoid fratricide. Friendly drones, civilian aircraft, even weather balloons. And yet, delays meant lost cities. Terrain compounded it. If flat steps gave nowhere to hide, forests hid ambushes, rivers broke radar coverage. The dilemma wasn't just tactical, it was existential. Ukraine needed a weapon cheap, mobile, and deadly enough to even the odds. The solution came in layers. Mobile fire groups, pickup trucks bristling with machine guns, technicals reborn with NATO brains. But the crown jewel, the game changer, was the helicopter. Army aviation, Mi-8s, Mi-24s, 
even light fixed wing craft fitted with AI enabled optical sights. These weren't your grandfather's gunners staring down iron sights. Neural networks trained on drone silhouettes, running off ruggedized tablets, scanning the night with infrared. An AI spotter that whispered, target 1.2 kilometers, heading 032. The gunner simply pulled the trigger. The machine did the math. Angular velocity, bullet drop, wind compensation, all solved in milliseconds. The pilot just flew the profile. Ukraine's defense industry, often dismissed as second tier, had built optics that could rival German Merop systems. Sometimes it's better, cheaper, lighter, faster to deploy, and it worked. From August to August, 3,200 Shaheds were swatted from the sky. Each one has a failed message from Moscow. Each one proof that ingenuity could outweigh oil wealth. Helicopters, once thought relics against modern missiles, were reborn as angels of the front lines. Low, fast, and lethal. It happens in seconds. A swarm approaches from Kursk airspace, hugging the river valleys. Kiev command radios, iron halo, intercept vector confirmed. The MI-8 crew throttles up, blades chopping air. Altitude, 50 meters. Speed, 180 kilometers per hour. The AI sight pings. First contact, the gunner swings the PKT heavy machine gun. Bursts crack through the night. Brass casings clatter against steel floor. A Shahed jerks left, engine coughing. Then silence, it spirals down in flames. The pilot banks hard, pulling 2.5G, vision tunneling. The sight flashes again, two more drones inbound. The gunner squeezes, tracers streak red hot, tearing through wings. At 400 meters, the impact is instant. One drone disintegrates mid-air. Another limps, dives, and plows into a wheat field. Mission clock, nine minutes. Kill count, seven. Not a single Shayhead reaches its program strike zone. For one night, the sky belongs not to Moscow, but to the hunters. Seven drones destroyed in one sortie. That's nearly 300 kilograms of explosives erased, the equivalent of a full artillery battery's daily barrage. Each intercepted drone means lives saved. Families who wake up to dawn instead of rubble. Energy substations remain online. Ammunition convoys keep rolling east. Commanders measure the effect not just in numbers destroyed, but in battles sustained. One night's work by a helicopter fire group equals millions saved in infrastructure and deterrence. The math is brutal and beautiful. A $5,000 burst of ammunition versus a $20,000 drone. Victory by economics. Victory by adaptation. The lesson is clear. The age of static defense is over. Mobility rules the air war. Where Patriot missiles protect cities, helicopters and AI-sided gun trucks guard the spaces between. Together, they weave an adaptive shield. Russia's strategy of saturation has met its counter. Every destroyed Shahed chips away at Moscow's psychological warfare. The Kremlin wanted exhaustion. Instead, it forged innovation. And Ukraine now demonstrates to NATO allies a doctrine with global implications. Agile, AI-driven, and mobile air defense. The future of counter-drone warfare isn't billion-dollar platforms. It's adaptable networks, where helicopters are as vital as stealth jets. Operation Iron Halo is more than a code name. It's proof that ingenuity, AI, and courage can defend a nation's sky. What do you think? Will mobile AI-enabled fire groups redefine how modern armies face drone swarms? And should NATO adopt Ukraine's model for its own layered defenses? Subscribe, share, and stay locked in, because the next battle in the drone war has already begun.